This is the K-Pop Cast, and in this episode, we talk about Rain's rippling abs in Vegas, Baby Monster's debut, the rise and fall of Sung Han, Jungkook and Espa's latest tracks, Blackpink meeting the King of England, aka Just Charles, and controversial parenting practices in Korea. This week, we have a packed house of esteemed guests. Some of my favorite people in the K-Pop Cast family are here First, we welcome back to the show, Joe. Hey. Hey, hey. And joining <laughs> us for the very first time, it's our girl Dina from the Slack. Hey, everybody. And last but not least, the most special VVVVVIP of all, another first time guest, longtime fan. It is my mom, Ashley. Hi, everyone. It's so good to talk to you both. Um, but before we get into those topics, don't forget to join the K-Pop cast listener fam on Slack. Link to the space in the episode description. And now for your hit replays. I'm Dina. I'm Ashley. I'm Joe. And I'm your host, Stephanie. And hit replays are what we call K-Pop songs you should totally check out. All right, Dina, kick us off. What's your hit replay? My hit replay is a dramatic song from the girl group Espa, and I bet you can guess the title. It's Drama. I bring, I bring all the drama, la, la, la. I bring drama, la, la, la. When my girl's in the back, girl's in the back. Drama. Drama, la, la, la. I bring drama, la, la, la. When my world's in the back. Not a scene that's in a drama. So Espa is a four-member girl group from SM Entertainment. They debuted in November 2020, and Drama is the title track off of their fourth mini-album, which is also called Drama. Just to get to tell you a little bit about um, the album, it showcases their vocal growth with a variety of genres, including charismatic hip-hop, lovely bright dance music, and sweet acoustic pop. And uh, according to the SM website, this album brings a new chapter to their SMCU lore by writing stories on their own way through unique music and visuals, now breaking out from the trauma caused by a series of events with season one sync out and hallucination quest and some unknown anomalies from season two. So I give the backstory because before drama was released, um, each member had a trailer that was like a mini movie where something traumatic was going on. I think that Winters was probably the most traumatic because she may have been a murderer, we're not sure. And it just kind of set the tone for the actual song, which is like a dark and sexy pop song. So what I really like about the song is the choreo. I feel like this is an elevation for Espa. They are more grown in this comeback. There's a darker vibe, but the choreo itself, it really pops. The moves are really sharp. They're also very sexy. And I just think it's a step up. We can see that Espa is growing um, uh, as a group up. and as I members. See what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, and I also think the song is super catchy. Um, someone else in the Slack. Uh, described it as something you might hear from Blackpink, which I do agree with. I happen to be a fan of Blackpink, so it doesn't bother me at all. Um, and it's kind of, it has that girl crush vibe, but it also just leaves you singing, or leaves me singing, drama ma ma ma, drama ma ma ma. <laughs> you know, it's in my head all day. So yeah, that's my hit replay. Yes, it's a really good mean girl anthem. Yes. Because sometimes you just feel like that. Like, I bring the drama. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love how, like, unabashed it is. I think the, the thing that I liked about this song while I was listening to it, one of several things was Bad Girls by M.I.A. kept playing in my head. And I was like, oh, because mm -hmm. Bad Girls by M.I.A. is also like a cinematic rage against the system uh, mm. type song. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, if they get a mix of this, this would be 
amazing because like this yes. is the first Esper track that I've liked since Next Level. And the main reason I liked Next Level is because it makes me feel like I'm in a assassin super spy type movie. And this was along mm-hmm. that same vein. Yeah, it has has some, you know, like Kill Bill type vibes in it. You know, everyone's fighting in the music video. It just, yeah, you feel you feel like a badass watching it and doing the moves. I agree. Mm-hmm. So next up for hit replays, we have Ashley. Tell us what your hit replay is. My hit replay is Standing Next to You by Jim Cook. It's my hit replay because it's an awesome song. As a more veteran uh, K-pop fan, uh, I was very pleased to hear the homage and tribute to some of my childhood uh, songs or sounds, such as the Earth, Wind & Fire horns, uh, Billie Jean, Michael-type moves, and melodic voice. Uh, I also like the choreo a lot. I'm uh, My favorite BTS song is Black Swan, and in the choreo official video, he's donning the Black Swan wings. In terms of his stage performances, I can't get enough of watching him gently sit the microphone down as he starts to join his Ooh, dance yes. crew and perform all his <laughs> moves with the seductive hip rolls um, oh, from yes. the whole crew, not just him. Uh, so I, I enjoy hitting replay for visual and audio pleasure. Amen. Boom. Yep. So much <laughs> pleasure. <laughs> yes, that was um, also one of my options for a hit replay. So I completely agree. And can I just chime in as well? Because yes. I am I am a BTS ARMY. Jungkook is my bias. And I feel like a proud mom. Yes. <laughs> Even though I am not his mom, I am just so, so, so incredibly proud of him. This song is amazing. His album is wonderful. And yeah. I'm so happy for him. I think, well, shout out to Mrs. Parker, Ashley, no. because <laughs> okay. like you, I'm not an army, but Black Swan is my favorite mm-hmm. uh, BTS song. Oh. And mm-hmm. I also got the same. I was raised by older people. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> so I was listening to a lot of 70s and 80s music. Mm-hmm. To me, this sounds like it's a homage to Off the Wall. Yes. Which kind of gives me chills because if you know Michael Jackson's music, Off the Wall is a great album on its own, but Mm -hmm. it's also the calm before the storm. Yes. So, like, I know K-pop fans weren't too excited about it because of it sounding Western, but in terms of who he's paying homage to, I don't want to set him up, but at the same time, Knowing that off the wall was the calm before the storm of thriller, I'm like, oh, I got goosebumps mm-hmm. for like what comes next, <laughs> whether it's Korean or English. <laughs> I'm ready. Yeah. Well, it's just uh, for me, it has a quality R and B feel. You mentioned Western, but maybe that's what you're referring to. Yes, so. that's what. Yes. Okay. Oh yeah, not country. You just mean like American, American yeah. Black, Army. Black music. Yes, that's yes. the way I interpreted it. I wanted to confirm though. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. No, definitely Michael. Definitely Earth, Wind, and Fire. Definitely mm-hmm. funky. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. And I have to also give him his shine because my mom is not into K-pop as much as I have tried to to bring her into the fold, but. Uh, she has perked up hearing this song. And when she's in the car with me, she's like, is that that boy? Mm-hmm. I like this song. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> yes, that's the boy, the golden boy. Yes. Mm-hmm. Hey, I think this is the beginning. You've got her hooked in. <laughs> yes. Soon she'll be like my mom. <laughs> <laughs> I yes, so. Joan Cook will be her bias. <laughs> oh, yes. I'm ready. Yes. Well, thank you so much, Mom, mm-hmm. Mrs. Parker. <laughs> okay. For... <laughs> For sharing your hit replay. I think all of us agree with you. All of us are really excited about this title track from Jungkook. Mm -hmm. Can't wait to see what's next for him. Mm -hmm. All right. Next we have Joe. What's your hit replay? So my hit replay is Cuddy Sark by R&B artist Dama. Yeah, 
So, Dama is a Korean R&B artist uh, who started out on SoundCloud in 2014. He joins LA-based production collective Divine Channel in 2018. And after their collaboration with Amoeba Culture, he joins Amoeba Culture with fellow Korean R&B singer Seoul in 2020. The reason that I picked this for my hit replay is I call this a juke joint jam. Juke joint jam meaning it kind of harkens back to that communal sounding music from the the juke joint of the American South, which is this place where Black American sharecroppers and uh, people would go to. It was a communal space outside of church and it's where you hear we get the blues, where we get jazz and country. And it's based in a type of jump blues, a subgenre of all three of those. Um, it also, the other reason I like it is it sounds like uh, D'Angelo's Sugar Daddy and yes. Back to the Future, <laughs> which is another reason why I like it. Um, and actually on the, it's from his second album, Wolf, which if you listen to the whole album, there are plenty of nods to D'Angelo's mixing of 70s funk and jazz. So that's just a brief reason why it's my hit replay. Mm, I need to check out this album. I don't know how I missed it, but that's my homework. Like right after this, Thama, wow. I, I've, I've been impressed with him since his debut. I was like, ooh, who's that? And mm -hmm. I think, Mom, you you too, you know his yes. voice. Yeah, very sultry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the D'Angelo influence is unquestionable. So thanks for letting me know about this track and about this album. Yep. Yes, and uh, Thama is new to me. So uh, today was my first time hearing the song. And it's totally a vibe. I can see myself listening to this while I'm working. So now I want to go check out some more. So thank you for introducing him to me. You're very welcome. All right. And last but not least is myself. My hit replay is Wait by Dino of 17. Please don't tell me. Wait. So Dino, who is actually the Mangne, the youngest member of uh, boy group 17 under Hive labels. He is in their performance unit. He's known for his dancing and shame on me. I just learned about him today through this <laughs> solo track. Forgive me. I cannot keep track of all the members of 17. I can't name them. I'm still making my way through, <laughs> even though I, I like the group. But Dino caught my eye with this solo track. I really enjoy that it has a kind of tension in the beat. There's a little pulling back. It doesn't go all the way or flow. It's driving and like stomping forward. And the instrumentation, the piano throughout, it just sounds so, so clean, so high quality. And it's really catchy. The message, however, could use work. He's basically saying, don't tell me to wait. Don't make me wait. And I'm like, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm so glad you said that the same reaction you know? <laughs> and I, I love Dino and I love consent and waiting like yes. you know it can make it better in the end you know what I mean um, but, yes. but yeah message aside <laughs> he looks good the, the video is fun um, he's waiting for his order at a cafe or sitting on a bench with flowers waiting waiting for his girl to text him back um, and in between these pauses he goes out into the streets and starts dancing so it's like it's it's straightforward. I enjoyed it. Um and yeah, now I know who Dino is. Yes, and um like you said, Dino's known for his dancing and he's an amazing dancer and also just a fun little um tidbit. He has a few like TikToks and reels where he dances with his parents and they're really good too. 
but I completely agree with you. I enjoyed the music. I enjoyed the choreo, um, but I did cringe a little at the lyrics and the message. I think I'm unfortunately this was one came in right before the buzzer of recording. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to go back and listen to it because no worries. 17. I'm I think it dropped today. Yeah. Oh, it, it dropped today. Today. I think so. Like, oh, yeah. Okay, cool. So yeah. I'm going to go back and listen to it because 17, I'm a carrot. And Dino is one K- of the carrot members. Is the fan club, the for, fan 17, club for 17. Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. And Dino is one of the members that I don't know because most of my time when I do follow catch up uh, with 17, I'm usually looking to see what DK my bias is doing. And then <laughs> as much as I love Hoshi, Hoshi takes up so much of the spotlight, Hoshi. right? Mm-hmm. Yes. And I love Hoshi, but like every, all the other guys do great work. Like June, I love June's thing from this summer, but Dino's, Thank you for giving me the heads up about the messaging so I don't like <laughs> scrunch, like automatically turn it off when I listen to it, but Ooh. I'll definitely check it out. Do it. Yes. I love how you you and I just traded like recommendations. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, that's awesome. And then Ma- mom and I were talking about this song right before the show. I don't know if you wanted to share what you thought of it, Ma. Yes. Well, I completely agree about the lyrics. Yeah, they make you cringe. Um, Before I knew what the lyrics were, um, mid dredged up the feeling of driving up uh, Highway 1, window down, uh, ocean breeze, a very smooth groove, a nice vibe on a vacation. Mm -hmm. Yes, that piano Mm -hmm. just goes a little like, (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. Yeah, that that. I fancy that. So moving on, that wraps it up for our hit replay section. And now we're moving on to our hot issue. How do you things? And I wrote this. I wrote this part. So I'm going to put myself and mom up front to talk about what was a highlight of the year for me. My birthday weekend, we saw... Rain, the one and only Rain performing in Las Vegas at the Still Raining Tour. So it has been how long? How long did he say? 14 years? Yes. 14 years. Mm-hmm. No, I, I, I just couldn't believe it. I could not. But then mom and I looked at each other and it's like, yep, we were there 14 years ago when he performed in Vegas the last yeah. time. That was oh, wow. for your high school graduation. Wow. Yep, wow. that was my high school. Yeah, you can figure out how old I am, but that was my <laughs> high school graduation present. That's amazing. <laughs> Ridiculous. And so it's really special that he decided to come back to Vegas. And I think on the same weekend, right? Like the, it, yeah, he either did it in November or December last yeah. time he too. He was at Caesar's Palace. Yes, time. he was at Caesar's last time. Gosh, what, what do we say about this show? He was uh, shirtless for pretty much the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Definitely complete. doesn't I, hurt. He <laughs> knows what the people want. He he knows what we paid for. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> he is in better shape than ever. Yes, yeah, uh, eight pack. Yes, yeah, definite eight pack and the side abs and all of that. So, yeah. He is just, he, he has improved in his dancing, improved in his vocals. So many, so many memorable moments. Well, I commented to you that I, I was very impressed with and, and appreciated the stage format he provided. Um, not just the in-person crew and himself on the stage could be viewed, but there was a very tall, slender um, cameo video going of him so you can really get a good close up of his amazing body in addition <laughs> to his videos running large enough for you to enj- re- revisit and enjoy the actual you know official videos of his song so there's multiple visual input that just accentuated everything going on it was amazing Yes, he had a live band as well, and he performed hits, including Switch to Me with JYP. Yes. <laughs> that's Yeah, that's one where he was he was performing, and then the music video mm-hmm. was playing, so we could see JYP's mm-hmm. silly antics and sigh in that video. Um, he also made a little, like, 
a video message acting like he's getting FaceTimed from Psy. Yeah. Like, Aww. hey, are you going to perform my song, man? And oh, then he performed Gangnam Style. <laughs> yeah, very <laughs> I rolled my eyes, but the crowd seemed to love it. Mm-hmm. It's like, all right, <laughs> I'll I'll take what I can get. Yeah. But it was it was just fun, just mm-hmm. straight up fun. He has so many hits from his decades. Like he he's he's been going for what twenty something years at this point. Yeah, yeah about twenty years, and it, it, he just makes it look effortless. You can mm-hmm. tell he's trying, but um, I I was just shaking my head that there's really nobody in the game at, since him who yeah. has his. I don't know what. I can't put my finger on it. Something like like his his swag, yeah, his charisma, his, his charisma, his power. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I he he didn't sell out the stadium, mm-hmm. and so I wonder. Like I, I just really hope it's not the last time. I really hope they don't take that as a really bad sign. I think promotions should have been done farther in advance. Mm-hmm. Honestly, we uh, heard about this show like a month ago, and not yeah. everybody can just like get up and go like that. We need a couple months notice. Yes, yeah, I think that's been that's an ongoing issue with K-pop promotion in general. Yeah. Um, however, and I know like when we talk about K-pop, certain fans hate to make comparisons, but in American pop, funnily enough, the hit show right now is technically his contemporary who has the same like nobody since him has really mm-hmm. done much, which is Usher. Usher, I, I knew you were going to say Usher. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And like, I was, Mom and I, was, I also saw Usher talking. Usher talking. Yes. Oh, wait, wait, Usher. wait. So wait, wait, wait. So did he like, no, uh, this is K-pop. I'm sorry. I won't. But like, if Brain did something, he could totally have done one of those pull somebody up or come out to their seat. Because mm. from what I saw, like he was giving that for the most part. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but like since Usher and Rain. In America or Korea, nobody's really been doing, and this is just like, I'm part of that generation of K-pop mm-hmm. fans that we like making fun of them. Cause like my cousin, shout out to Lena, um, he'll post his recordings, uh, or not recordings, his rehearsals. And when he posts his rehearsals, it's kind of like the moves aren't as, <laughs> they work better on stage than they do in rehearsal. And like, we make fun uh-huh. of it, but at the same time, he is a legend for a reason to be respected. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's very polished. He makes it look easy, but it's not at all. Mm-hmm. No. Mm-hmm. And for someone that tall <laughs> yeah. to be moving yes. around, like jumping around and, on yeah, the floor. from up to like getting down on the floor. He was, you know, he covered all the levels. Mm-hmm. <laughs> covered all that ground, all levels. Mm-hmm. Yes. Big shout out to Rain. Please come back. Please do a show in L.A. next time. Yeah, that you know, get those out. Cali people. I, yeah, right? I feel like yeah. L.A. would. I, when I saw that he didn't do an L.A. Did he do an L.A. show? No. Nah. The Atlantic City. Oh, so he went Vegas. straight for the. Which I kind of understand, uh, because all, all older acts tend to do the casino, but like mm. L.A. is your technical mm-hmm. second I mean, home come outside on, of man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it makes it would make. You would sell out. Mm-hmm. And that's just yes. the Korean population mm-hmm. <laughs> of yeah. LA. Yes. Uh-huh. We were we were sitting next to some really cute Ajumas, Ajushis. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Older Who stayed Korean in their folks. seat, which I did not. Nope. <laughs> Mom is on camera getting up out of her seat. <laughs> um yeah, yeah. We we were we were seated seated between a couple groups who just stayed in their seat the whole time. Seemed to be enjoying it, but uh you never know. Yeah, this isn't about rain, but they were the best concert seats I ever had, thanks to Amr. Yes, shout we out to Key Dragon. On the floor, we were just like one or two levels up from the floor, so you could see over everyone's head that was on the floor, but looking directly at the stage. It was perfect. Oh wow! <laughs> yep. And for us older folks, we had chairs. You yeah. know? <laughs> oh, padded chairs. I, yeah, padded yes. chairs. I love a concert chairs. with a chair. <laughs> oh yeah, they um. They sold out of merch really yeah, fast. There were a couple of balls dropped in terms of marketing. Mm-hmm. It's like they totally, I don't know. Yeah, with with, with a few tweaks, I mm-hmm. think this could have been a, a slam dunk show mm-hmm. for him. Well, we were hoping that they would be blasting rain songs throughout the whole hotel, but that wasn't happening either. I mean, that's what we would do no. if we were in charge. 
<laughs> so <laughs> we would have rain on all of the yeah. yes. What um, what theater was this at? In at uh, MGM in Grand Arena. Oh, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. nice venue. Mm-hmm. It is, but it's also huge. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He filled. What do you think? Like two thirds. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Two thirds. Yeah, that ain't, that ain't the, too the, bad. The far back seats were not filled. Mm-hmm. Okay. But the floor, the floor was full and the mm-hmm. midsection pretty full. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Rain, please hire me. Yeah. For promotions and operations <laughs> and like all of that. I got you. <laughs> hmm Yes. Gosh, remember, mom, when he was scheduled to perform in L.A. and we had tickets to Staples yes. and it got canceled? Yeah. Remember? Yeah. That's sad. Oh, trauma. Yes. Triggered. Why did trauma it get canceled? Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Drama and trauma. Yes, both. Yeah, that that was due to the his um like the event management mm-hmm. company. They they dropped the ball on paying for some fire safety thing and then they they canceled the show like the day before. It was nuts. Wait, fire safety isn't included on that? <laughs> I, I, right. I don't know if that's the real story. I think somebody didn't get paid what they're supposed to get paid. Uh that'll yeah. But yeah, they tanked the whole thing. We were we had our tickets, we were ready. Oh, okay. So that's, yo, <laughs> that's besides the point. He did a great show in Vegas and yeah, yeah here's hoping he, he comes back and does it again. Cause I, I like, we lost our voice. We were yep. out of our seats. He played the old songs, the new songs, mm-hmm. everything. He did a cover I of do, Silk Sonic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just all around. Good time. Anything else you want to share? I think you covered most of it. Yeah. You commented he uh, tried to do a Silk Sonic cover, but he, his stuff is better than that even. Ooh. Ooh. Gauntlet thrown. Goodness. <laughs> the gloves are coming Latin out. Words. I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah. I'm a Silk Sonic fan, but yeah, Reigns, his, his history is just quality from start to finish. Mm, mm, mm. That is so right. So moving on to Joe's how do you think slash hot issue. What did you want to share? All right. So my how you think, uh, I put it in my notes as initially we ride at dawn <laughs> for Gumjian, But <laughs> upon further study, the child's name is actually Su Ojin. So there in Korea, there is a show called My Golden Kids. And it's hosted by child psychiatrist, uh, Dr. Oh Eun-young. And it's kind of like super nanny meets hello counselor. Um, parents come on with the problems that they have with problems that they're having with their children. And they discuss them with Dr. O and try to find a solution. So Su Ojin's case, his parents, uh, he just, re- he has a newborn baby sister. And the problem is like little boys do, he's, and all children, when you have a younger sibling, he feels left out. And when you look at the film, when they show the film of the family, they're all around the baby girl, but he's either in a room, in his room by himself, or if he's in the same room with the family, they're all around the baby and he's off to the side on his own. And like children do, he starts acting out to get attention, which all like all that was that tug at the heartstrings, but it's the interview that they do with little Ojin that made people around the world <laughs> uh, kind of stop and go, oh my goodness. Because when he mm-hmm. talk, uh, when he talks about his parents, they're like he says like which of your parents do you like? And he pauses and he thinks and he says, well, sometimes Daddy gets angry with me, and he's scary. And then they go. He just rattles that off. But then they ask, okay, so what about your mom? Does she play with you? And he stops for about one to two minutes looks at the camera and he starts tearing up and he says, please give me a minute. And it's like, Oh, so sad. It's like, Oh, like my heart was already kind of breaking. But when I was like, okay, he's old enough to like, or he's kind of been, 
he's kind of been shown that his emotional his emotions don't matter so he's like trying to pull his calm himself down and that yeah that you're not supposed to cry freely yeah you're supposed (laughs) to hold it in and that was like the first five minutes of so basically i think channel a realized this was going viral and they put up a short 10 minute truncated version of the episode with english subtitles um Mm -hmm. so if you want to capitalizing right if you want to see it they posted it two days ago so you can go uh from this recording so you can go and see it but as the episode goes on because i did go and watch the full episode the dad both mom and dad work full-time he has a grandmother that lives with them but both both parents are basically worn out by their jobs grandmother has had a surgery i believe so she's not at full health um the father kind of pushes ojin off on his mother because it's his mother that lives with them or his wife and usually when they all get fed up with him mom usually goes straight to punishment and it's like the last resort types of punishment and then oh no yeah and dad will just kind of shut down um so like one of the scenes that was potentially triggering if you watched the episode was she'll she basically picks him up puts him down in the room and starts kind of spanking him with like an inflatable bat it's like one of those yeah no and i'm watching the full episode and like they get the solutions and everything and I understand. Wait, so being... can, can we re- rewind for a second? That this mm-hmm. show is about the parents seeking counseling. What did they say the problem was that they need help with? Well, they said before they had the new ba- the newborn baby, they said he was a sweet, lovable child. But ever since then, they said he had become he had he does start uh, he does start acting up like all children. Um, basically, Ojin. Um, and actually, and this was what kind of really broke me. <laughs> um, there are times where his mother leaves him and, or like, she'll either punish him, like go straight to punishment when he's acting up or like when they're out and about, they go to a playground and she leaves him like of the many things that she does that is like too the punishment is too harsh for the crime she leaves him and i am not a parent but i have been a child and i'm a tertiary uncle um every child knows the feeling where you look around and mommy is not there oh <laughs> wait you, you said uh you watched some korean reactions uh the, or not korean reactions i read some oh okay um So the basic, the base of, they go a little bit deeper into the backstory. Um, His mother, and this is what Ayan LeVenzant would call pathology. Um, His mother gives a story about how her mother abandoned her. And when her, her, when her father remarried, her stepmother was mean to her. So she always had this, uh, she always felt like she had to earn that love had to be earned. Um, which is understandable, but Mm. Ojun is four years old and he doesn't like he that that's probably what broke everybody's heart. He said, I think my mother doesn't like me. And yeah, she left him to punish him. No. Well, she was dealing with the baby and she had to go change the baby's diaper. And she said that she was she left him on his own. Like she sent him to go play and then she turns around to go take care of the baby. Oh, she didn't tell him that she's leaving. She didn't tell him that he was leaving. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. She didn't tell him that he was leaving. And um, his father is in the room, but he's not present. Yep. Uh, (laughs) And grandma, she tries to give that loving it's basically three adults that aren't communicating his grandmother tries to give him that loving support but his mother and father tell grandma basically stop trying to coddle him if you coddle him he'll get spoiled wow and 
like the, it was the, basically the whole reason that I found this show was through TikTok because it was yes. just tons of people on TikTok saying like, "Hey yo, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that look <Hey> like because <laughs> like it was a lot of like it was like a lot of I, the way the algorithm works for me. I get a lot of black TikTok and black yep. K-pop TikTok on top of right. the regular. Mm-hmm. So I'm seeing a lot of black people that aren't related to how you culture or k-pop tiktok but they like ayo if your mama don't treat you right you got black family in america that'll take care of you baby (laughs) because like every like the the one girl i posted she was like so many people like i don't even want kids but i want to see how i can adopt him legally (laughs) because he he is he was too he's too small to understand what you're what the adults are doing (laughs) The fact that he says, I'm afraid of my, my father scares me and my mother doesn't like me. I was like, OK, yeah, I thought we were as Americans and non-Korean people, we were overreacting. But then I saw the way his parents and his mother specifically went about things. And I was like, ma'am, if I if I was in, Ricky, when I catch you, Ricky, <laughs> Ricky, when I get you, <laughs> Ricky, because, yeah. Like, if you treat him like this, when baby girl gets old enough, how are y'all going to treat her? And then they wanted the thing that incensed everybody else is they said they were going to attempt a third child. And I'm like, y'all are doing a piss poor job with the two y'all got right now. And you want a third. Um, Uh. So at the end of the episode, they after Dr. O does give her solutions, they are starting to play with him more. But, you know cynical people on the internet were like yeah i think y'all just doing this for the show i mm-hmm. think y'all went right back to mistreating yeah. him after them cameras mm-hmm. went off so yeah that's it that is my how you thing if you have any reactions well i i have a lot of thoughts um i haven't seen the whole show um mm-hmm. but i saw the tiktok that you posted and so for me, my first reaction was honestly, I have a three year old son, and and I was like, hey, could my son say this about me? Do I play with him enough? You know, <laughs> oh, I just started going to, uh-oh. but yeah, if I we interviewed play- your kids. <laughs> <laughs> oh snap! I was like, oh, what would my son say? Do I, you know, I do play with my son, but you know, he also we are. Uh, He's an only child, so he doesn't have a sibling. And so I'm like, oh, what if he said that I don't play with him enough, but I do play with him. But, you know, so that was my first reaction. Um, I think that, you know, it was definitely heartbreaking to see him cry. And I was I was proud of him for even being able to articulate how he was feeling. Yeah. Um, And so, you know, my hope is that his parents like watched watched his interview and you were able to like reflect right um Mm -hmm. hopefully you know i think the critique was that his mother they do do a little bit more with his mother in the solution they don't really go to the father at all which was Mm -hmm. an issue in itself Mm -hmm. gendered yep Mm -hmm. because this is one of those cultural differences i'm like and from what I hear, a lot of the parents have this issue where fans, international fans are like, did you actually want to have these kids or was there a cultural societal obligation to have them? And since you don't mm. necessarily, you know, having kids out of obligation is a lot different than having kids out of, you know, wanting to bring them here. Well, I wonder if, if they said they wanted a third child, then maybe they you know, are choosing to have the children. I'm not sure, but I don't know. I think for me, I, ever since I became a parent, I've tried really hard not to judge parents um, Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. it's, it's hard. It's really, really hard. And, and I felt like the, I could empathize with the, the working parent piece of it. Right. And just, right. Like I work long hours as well, you know, me and his dad both work. And so I do understand the whole, like when you get home after a long day and you're tired, but obviously you still have to be aware of how you're reacting and treating your child. And so you have to be aware of if are, is your child's needs being met? 
And in this case, you know, his needs aren't being met. And so it's just something good that they were able to call attention mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. Um, so that they can work yeah. on a solution. I do th- I do like for me, my, my like wondering is more so around, you know, if they how, you know, how were they told to like kind of introduce the baby to the family? Because like uh, a child acting out when a baby is born is a very common thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, my wondering was more so like, oh, if they had, you know, had that approached it differently prior to his little sister coming into um, the picture, maybe that could have helped uh, helped him with the transition as well. Mm-hmm. I haven't watched the show, but did the psychologist talk about that at all? Yes, yeah, she did. So she did uh, from the translated uh, somebody who is more familiar with Korean than I am did translate the solutions and they were talking about how she does talk about splitting enough or making sure that you are spending time with your older child, even though you have a newborn. As I said, the internet reaction to that was, yeah, we kind of think they're going to go back to doing their own thing after the camera goes off. Mm -hmm. But hopefully I'm not sure how much of this reaction is going to be, you know, have impact, but I'm hoping for Ojun's sake that he is getting the attention and care uh, that he needs. Yeah. Yeah, the video definitely tugged at my heartstrings when I saw it. And, you know, I, I've i shared a couple of times on the show that I am studying to become a somatic therapist. And um, part of that part of that training of like trauma healing for parents is something called reparenting. How do you parent Mm. yourself? And so I I haven't seen this show either, but I would really lean on the approach of, you know, talking to the parents individually about their upbringing and the pain and the trauma that they went under. And like, Mm -hmm. why do they have the belief in their mind that, uh, like this fear around spoiling the child, it must be something that they experienced or that was instilled in them. And like, once we start to, um, you know, allow the adult to grieve some of the trauma they experienced or how they were neglected or how they were ab- abused in whatever way, they can start to open up space for understanding their child and not being triggered by when they see their child show emotion like just because it was policed in their home last generation doesn't mean they need to turn around and um you know pass the same thing down they there is stuff they could do in their own their own healing their own emotional expression that will just ripple out onto the child without like focusing on what the child is doing if that makes sense yeah and actually that uh shout out to Michaela for getting the outline together because she did post uh couple of articles about how this um, show, My Golden Kids, is being criticized in South Korea because Dr. O takes a what they call a no punishment approach to parenting or what we would call in America a gentle parenting approach. And there's if you've been on social media for the past year, you already know that there's kind of a hard line that's been drawn again. Uh, people for gentle parenting or those that are against or mocking (laughs) gentle parenting and the way she basically it's different from, and maybe this is probably what it is. People of color, black people, (laughs) Asian people, African people, Hispanic, Latinx people, Latin a people apparent, like because of all of our various cultures have (laughs) big trauma points and that, unfortunately rears its head in child rearing because I know for the parents of my parents, my grandparents and great grandparents, it's more on the emphasis is on survival versus care. Mm. And I think that's what Dr. O is trying to get them, get Korean society to change from going from raising your children on survival to actual getting to nurture and caring. Yeah, of, of course, the introduction of gentle parenting would be like, ha, like that's a joke for for families who have <laughs> you know been through so much and they and they believe that it was their you know s- 
strength and holding it together and being tight and disciplined and not spoiling. Like if, if, if you really believe like that's what has kept you alive. And in a way, those skills have like you, you do need to be able as a black person in this society, you cannot just willy nilly show your emotions, show how angry you are, show how sad you are in front of the wrong people. Like we have to have that kind of control to survive. That's true. Um, so it's, it's complicated. It's nuanced when like somebody comes in here going, Oh no, no more, no more punishment. You have to be gentle all the time. We need to look, we need to look back. Like you're saying, Joe, we need to look back past the parents generation, the grandparents and that trauma and like take the curtain off of it, take the veil off of it, start mm-hmm. talking about that, start crying about it, yelling about it. And then I like, like, like I said, only then, like when we're more kind and gentle to ourselves, then we will automatically start to treat our children like that. But just coming in like last minute, like, oh, you need to be nicer to your kid and shaming parents for how stressed and triggered they are every day. Yeah, uh, that's that ain't going to work. Nope. <laughs> no. And my, mom, I don't I don't want to really put you on the spot, but you you're a lifetime educator and a parent. Yeah. What are, what are some of your thoughts as you watch the clip or just uh, watching the clip that you share with me and listening to Joe? Um, I just keep going back to the bigger picture. And, you know, uh, I, I meet my first instinct is not to judge the parents based on what was shared on media, that there's so many other things which you've alluded to history, how they've been impacted, uh, cultural expectations. And for me as a you know, career educator and just start with safety and respect first. Um, mm-hmm. I, I know even discipline wise, um, you have options, you have choices. And if you're supported in uh, thinking about safety and respect first, you don't start with the the violence. You don't start with the isolation. You usually start with trying to communicate or listen and so I don't know, I don't know what the psychologist recommended, but that has always been uh, effective for me. If I found myself in a situation where I needed to support a child and figuring out how to get their needs met and um, having their behavior reflect that their needs are met in a way that society considers to be positive. And those don't always align um, because sometimes you need to scream. Sometimes you are angry. Uh, yeah, there's there's so mm-hmm. many pieces to it. Mm-hmm. So many pieces. And before we move on, I like somebody. I just thought about something that somebody wrote um, on social media, but they were talking about how there's not really communication between mom, dad, and grandma. And mm, I think yeah. that's one. Like I have been blessed to and be raised in the. We overuse this, but, you know, it takes a village to raise a child. Mm -hmm. I can honestly say that I was raised around people that took that seriously. And like, but everybody Mm. talked to each other about how I was raised. Right. And it was like they were on. Everybody was on the same page about, you know, giving me what I needed and me and my brother and my cousins and making sure that we were all supported in what we wanted, how we wanted to be raised and not talk. They were never, they were always parents and aunties and uncles and grandmas and grandpas, but they never talked down to us. Mm-hmm. Um, wow. Yes. Because mm-hmm. there's, mm-hmm. there's, there's a scene where Ojun talks about how he likes to draw and how he wants to be a painter. And then they cut to a scene of him and his mother drawing. And he says he wants to go to art school. And his mother says, you're not handsome enough to go to oh, art no. school. Why would you what? ever? What is? And uh, that's what does that have and, to do with art? Right, and I'm just like, yeah. Don't, there's some cultural expectations there we don't fully comprehend. That's true, and I, that's kind of where I had to like. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, I'm American at this point. I have to chill a little bit because mm-hmm. I can't fully go off the way I want to because. You know, <laughs> yeah, that's I, true. I, yeah, when whenever we have a reaction that's like that's ridiculous, that makes no sense. That shows that we're we're missing something mm-hmm. somewhere mm-hmm. over yeah, there. It makes sense. Difference. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and I, I shoot. We we do know how in um, yeah Korea, 
you put your picture on your resume. Like you, you are judged by looking a certain way. Mm -hmm. Um, when you apply to jobs or schools or whatever, it's just a part, it's more of a part of it than, um, more of an overt, (laughs) uh, (laughs) like qualifier than here. Here it's like, definitely "Ah." true in the (laughs) idol industry. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, And aside from that, I'm just like, why are we lying? Mom, we're all looking at him and like, I loved him from the minute he He's showed beautiful. up on the screen. I was like, yeah, so cute. And you like to cut a child down in that way. I was like, Ugh, yeah, oh, yeah. there's still no excuse to say that to your <laughs> child, especially not in that way. Oh, <laughs> anyways. <laughs> All right. Well, I All think, right. I no, think, think, uh-huh. Go ahead. I, I was just gonna say, I think overall it's, it's, it's interesting just to have a bird's eye view of, kind of maybe seeing this gentle parenting movement begin in, I don't know if it's just beginning in South Korea or not. Uh, I feel like it kind of took off in the States during COVID, you know, with Mm. like just the rise in social media, you're seeing like more and more, or I was seeing more and more videos about gentle parenting. So it's, it's just interesting, you know, just to compare and see like culturally the the difference in responses. I think it, it sounds like the debate that we're having here is a similar debate that they're having there as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I would say one last thing, which is that for everybody listening, gentle parenting is just another name for pre-colonial indigenous ways of living with our families. Before colonization, before slavery, African people did not beat their children. Mm -hmm. There's no record of that. They did not shout at, you know what I'm saying? Um, Children were raised in the village. They had a ton of aunties and moms and dads and and grandmas and everybody looked out for them. Just like Joe is saying, like this, this is our stuff. This is people of color stuff that uh, just like all kinds of appropriated practices (laughs) is now, (laughs) now has a white face and is, you know, being introduced back to us like, Oh, you black people, you need to stop beating your kids. You need to be gentle like us. Uh, I just want to put that out there that it is our stuff, our original way before colonization, slavery, capitalism came and forced this, this trauma of abusing children and abusing each other, abusing workers, abusing women, abusing animals, all of like gentle parenting is like too limited, too narrow. We need to look at how we interact with everybody around us and how these systems are violent and abusive towards us. That's where we learn it. All right. I just went off anyway. I am. (laughs) No, it was good. It It was good. (laughs) (laughs) I think about this a lot. Um, but yeah, I think that about wraps it up for our hot issue, how do you think section. And now we're moving on to Daybok or not. Woo 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 woo. Ba-da, ba-da, So the Daybok or Not section is where we do rapid fire calls on whether a song or a news item is Daybok, which means like great, hot (laughs) in Korean or not. So we need to go real fast, y'all. First, it's Die For You by Dean, his big comeback. What do we think about it? (laughs) Daybok. Oh, Joe. You're (laughs) I, cause I said, okay, so like I said this in the Slack, it was too much and not enough at the same time. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. mostly mm-hmm. because I'm glad, is Daybok, cause I'm glad we have Dean back, cause we yeah. thought between him, Rihanna, and Frank Ocean, <laughs> <laughs> we thought we were just like out here in the ocean lost, right? It's never gonna see him again. <laughs> yeah. Just, and shout out to Dean for being the first one back. But <laughs> and Rihanna's coming too. Okay, and Rihanna's Next coming year, too. Sure. I yeah. believe it when I see it. But the song itself, it's very nice. A lot of people were like, "I could have did an album." 
<laughs> and I and I hate saying it because but I kind of feel the same. Um, yeah. So yeah, Daybok for the song and him being back, or Daybok for him being back, not necessarily for the song. I I totally I say not. <laughs> yes, stand in it, mom. Yeah, I, well, with my exposure, my quick flash in the pan exposure to the songs today, I my initial impression is not Daybok. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, and mom, yeah, you. I've I've sent you Dean's music before from the old mm-hmm. days. I I mm-hmm. think his his previous tracks blow this one out of the water. Mm-hmm. I think the problem I, is he's. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead, Joe. Go ahead. He's still stuck in the, like when he left us with Howlin' Four Hundred Four. He was trying out this Travis Scott type sound, which yeah. I wasn't a big fan of. And this song, even though he's singing more and there's less um, production on it he's still not ready to let that Travis Scott type sound go. And I was just like, but your first stuff was like, it was so groovy and it was smooth and it was, and I know you can do it. And you've been hanging out (laughs) with all the right people in LA. Like you stay working, you stay like you work, you you're heavy in the LA R and B guild. So like what? Show us. Yeah. Yeah, you, you, I couldn't have said it better myself. I totally agree. It's like light, low debak for me. Well, I'll have to be um, the different one here. It is a debak for me. Woo. Um, well, I will say as my disclaimer that I am late to the Dean train. <laughs> and so I don't have as much of historical context with him as you all do. I have heard some of his other songs. I like all of them. This one in particular, I enjoy because when the song starts playing, I just want to close my eyes and just kind of get lost in the sound of it. Um, And so and and I find myself kind of singing along like in the croony type of voice as well. Mm -hmm. So for that reason, um, it's a day back for me. Nice. All right. Moving on to Crush. Day back or not. (laughs) <laughs> I hear some giggles. I hear some hmm. Okay, well, I I giggle because I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I'm day back or not on it. I just my thought was, oh, this is another song that Justin Timberlake could collab on. <laughs> <laughs> That's what mm-hmm. I hear. True when I listen to it. Yes. So day back. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we we like those tracks in general. Day yes. for me. Uh, I'm gonna say not. Yes. Go for and it. And it's also it, Crush. Like, I posted a. For those that aren't on the Slack, when they announced that Crush had a new song, I posted a GIF of that GIF of Shakira going to press the button and then her hand going off to the side. Mm. Um, so part of me is still a little raw from the controversy yeah. <laughs> that went down with Crush last year. Uh. And. I know in K-pop fandom, folks like to pass things off of like, it wasn't that big. When the New York Times has to cover it. Dang. When the New York Times does a story on, were you racist or anti-Black to your fans? Uh, so after I made like a decision, that I'll give the album one listen. So Hunchi didn't make that much of an impact on me and the whole album is not as cohesive as his prior work mm-hmm. um and i'm still like i'm not sure if it's my personal feelings that's affecting that outcome but it feels like he didn't know what sound he wanted because the sound on the whole album jumps around and you don't really get to a typical crush sound till like the last five tracks or so yeah so yeah that's a it's a not for me fair no, and thank thank you for naming the the controversy as being yeah it's it's just like a cloud over what he does. That's it's just real. This this is the plight of the black K pop fan. Everybody, What's yeah. <laughs> Although speaking of which, th- shout out to the lady, the young black woman uh, named Amaka. I'm probably destroying that pronunciation, but she's an R and B singer uh, that he has a duet with called deep end which is probably the best track on the album to me Mm. um because her voice if it's a 
it's like a get it's that good and get sexy R and B. And like she hey has now. this she has this kind of whisper in your ear type of low voice that I had to pause because I was like, let me catch my breath because her voice Ooh. can do some things. <laughs> so <laughs> that is the one that's the one of two songs that I preferred m- more than him cheat. All right. So the word is check out the album, everybody. Moving on to La 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 by Stray Kids. What do we think? Daybok. Woo. I love it. I love it. This was going to be another hit replay for me. Oh, snap. Um, the whole album is really good. Yeah. I could go on, but I'm going to try and, and Cool. Yeah, short, let's keep but, it keep it short. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? Uh, borderline. Mm. Not. <laughs> yeah, border, Borderline for me. Low, low Daybok, just considering their, their past work being a bit more impactful. But hey, they the dancing. Oh, my God. The yeah, power. I liked... I did enjoy the uh, the only other song that connected for me with, with Stray Kids was Case 143. And mm. this kind of is in the same vein because it's like a dimbo. Dimbo. I I'm, don't know how if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but a uh, dimbo type track. It's a Latin Caribbean yep. type backing track and crumping. I always enjoy seeing. Hey. Uh, but yeah, not because... Not for me, because I've always had a, I connect with Stray Kids on the variety level. Love what they do in variety, but the music just does not connect with me. (laughs) I love that. I'm going to start saying that. I connect with them on the variety level. Yes. (laughs) They do have a rock version of this song on their album. So if you like the more rock style, that may be more your fancy. Mm -hmm. Um. But also just have to shout Stray Kids out because their album did really well. Um, and they yeah. broke a record recently. Check out the album, everybody. All right. Next, we have the ladies of Red Velvet with Chill Kill. Daybok. <laughs> <laughs> Daybok. And a part of me wishes that the thing that they were killing was the Revy Festival. Because hey, whew, now. I'm a Spill day one. Tea. I'm a day one Red Velvet fan. Revy Festival needs to be obliterated from existence. I don't really care how you feel about it. Argue with your mama and daddy. <laughs> Michaela might fight you. <laughs> yeah, look, look, Zim's all, Zim's all them, birthday, all of them need to die in a fire. All of them. <laughs> sorry. Not sorry. Okay. Daybok. All right. Yeah, I would say Daybok on the video, not on the mm-hmm. audio for me. Mm-hmm. But they're really? really talented. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> this didn't grab me. And our final Daybok or not. Oh, oh, oh yeah, sorry, sorry Dina, you did. Daybok. Yeah, go ahead. Well, I'm just... It's Daybok for me. It's okay. okay. It's Daybok for me, although I was thrown off by the happy chorus when um, everything else about the song seemed like it was going dark. But yeah. uh, I still appreciate it, and I'm singing... I'm singing it at home all the time. So, Daybok. All right. Our last Daybok or Not music selection is the debut a lot of us have been waiting for of the new girl group, Baby Monster, with Batter Up. Highly anticipated. What do we think? Not. Daybok. <laughs> I'm in the, I I'm in the I middle. I love the variety. What, whatever's in between Daybok and Not, I'm in the middle. <laughs> Mm. Night. You spent all that time and all that money hyping these babies up, and that's what you leave us with. Mm. Nah. Yeah. At this point, it feels like y'all need to pack it up because, <laughs> like, they're working YG, hard. Yeah. Why? 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 Sounding like Black yeah. Pink and Treasure sounding like Black Pink and Baby Monster sounded like Black Pink yeah. is not gonna cut it in 2024. I'm telling mm-hmm. you right yeah. now. I I agree. I do wish they could, you know, diversify a little bit away from the Black Pink sound. As much as I love Black Pink, um, you know, I'm still rooting for them because I watched the show. I know all the girls' names. Mm. I'm crushed that Ion is not there. Oh. Um, but 
I do kind of wish that that YG could break away from their formula a little bit. Like when the uh, bridge, when they, we the got to the bridge, chorus. I started laughing. I was like, oh, not this again. Again, <laughs> yeah, they've been doing that for, what, a decade at this point. More. Yeah. <laughs> Since just, Gen like, 2, we've been having this like party chorus, Teddy thing. Yes. And I'm and these, it. I mean, let me see, the girls can really sing, um, yeah. the, the ones who are their singers. And so... I was texting with my friend about it and I was like, you know, I hope when their album drops that maybe there's like a jazzy type song or something that can really showcase their vocals. Um, yes. I would say with this debut in particular, my favorite part was actually the rap. I think that Me too. Um, yep. Ruka and Asa killed it in the rap. But yeah, they can change things up a little bit over at YG Entertainment. I agree. All right. Now, moving on to the news section of Daybok or Not, let's try and keep it quick, keep it cute. We have two stories to discuss. First being, oh, look, we were just talking about them. Blackpink hit Buckingham Palace for a royal visit with the king and queen. How do you mm. feel about that? Not. <laughs> why? Oh, damn. <laughs> Wait, who said why? My mom needs to know why. (laughs) Okay, okay, Mrs. Parker, this is why. (laughs) Okay. I hate Charles too much for this to be cool with me. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. Notice I said Charles. Charles. Yes. (laughs) Yes. Not the king. Mm -hmm. Charles. Yeah, just Charles. (laughs) The disrespect. I love it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's it's a knot for me too. Why are we hobnobbing with you know the empire with blood on its hands? Well, so my understanding from the article is there was an event um, with the Korean president and his wife, I believe. And so they were there for that. Um, It was a dinner, a state dinner in honor of the South Korean president and the first lady. So they were the entertainment. I don't think they performed, though. No, No, I think they were just attending the dinner. Mm -hmm. And. I think, too, that Blackpink has it was also being praised for their work with um, the U.N. climate change conference mm. and something about something about climate change. Okay. And so because I think that's what they got a shout out from. Should I call him Charles as well? Um, <laughs> yeah. <Rosalind Yeah>. Charles. <laughs> 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 I'll just go with the flow. Uh, Char- I don't even know if it was Charles who spoke. Someone was speaking and shouted out each member. Um, their reactions were really cute, by the way. There's videos going around where mm. Jisoo was just like, huh? Like, they just said my name. That was really cute. Um, but they were being applauded for their role in bringing the message of environmental sustainability to a global audience as ambassadors mm-hmm. for the UK's presidency of COP26 and later as advocates for the UN Sustainable Development Goals. So okay. so they were there for a reason, basically. Okay. Mm-hmm. So That's you're a day reason. Mom? You can be. No. (laughs) (laughs) You said no. (laughs) No. Yeah, yeah. There's no excuse. No. I mean, if I were invited to a fancy dinner, I might say yes, but... Mm -hmm. All right. Finally, Rise's Sunghan. So that's SM's newest boy group. They, like, just debuted yesterday. They already lost a member. Sunghan to take indefinite hiatus following private life controversies. Oh, oh big sigh. It's it's a nuanced knot. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah? A nuanced knot? <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I kind of have... I It's like nuanced building on my feelings from what, hap- what happened with Lucas. Because mm. mm-hmm. it was more like It sucks that you're a terrible person. (laughs) And like, I was trying to, like, I was trying, and like this, in this case, Sung Han isn't a terrible person. He just caught caught being a regular human. Yeah. Um, In Lucas's, in Lucas's case, I'm like, oh yeah, you're a, you're a, you're a fuck boy to put it bluntly. (laughs) Um, Which is also pretty normal and expected, but okay. Anyways, getting off of, off topic. And like you posted your newsletter about yeah. how we uh, how this relates to uh, transformational justice or restorative justice. Yeah. And as somebody who's 
at least since I've been in college, I've been learning more about it, but I'm still having to one unlearn carceral behavior. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like all it's kind of like with gentle parenting. It's like I believe in the cause of one, but it's buttoned up against what I know and yeah. unlearning what I know is uncomfortable. <laughs> Like, just because you act a way, do I want you to leave the group and leave the industry or do we try to do something to at least inform us that you're working to be better? Which, I'm, unfortunately, I'm too cynical to believe this will ever be a thing in K-pop. So, yeah. <sighs> yeah. That's real. Yeah. And I feel like. It just reminded me of everything that happened with Kim Gotham when Lacerda yeah. debuted. And I guess just to give context for anyone who doesn't know, like, yeah, you know, please do. the things that happened with Sung Han, it's just been various things that came out. First, it was like him with a his girlfriend or a, a girl um, kissing. And then there's been like a, this a photo thing about, was yeah. released, or released of yes, that. Yeah. A photo. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And then there was a video that was leaked from, I guess, like maybe a private um, Instagram account where he had gone live with Subin and, you know, was kind of talking, uh, I don't know, inappropriately to him or something. I don't know what the chatter was about, but then something about it being disrespectful to a female K-pop idol. Then there was some, another leaked video of him smoking. And oh, no. again, I, it's just like these normal things, which then, you know, one of the recent reports I heard was that the person who posted it then apologized after he was removed from the group and was uh -huh. like, oh, I didn't know that this was going to go viral. And wow. I didn't mean, you which know, is I just, always, and, and, <laughs> always you know, how it goes. And, 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 that's the thing that like bothers me <sighs> is how like one person has so much power to like destroy someone's career over something so small in the k-pop industry you know like something i guess that maybe we view as small maybe to others it's not small because obviously people got mad and wanted him out of the group but but for me i'm just like where's where's like did they do an investigation was there evidence i just mm. feel like someone could just go on twitter make up some oh. stuff and then <laughs> you're like out of a group you know yes. speaking of which speaking of which speaking of which thank you for bringing that up dana didn't SM, didn't y'all earlier this year start a whole website hmm. where y'all said, if you hear anything about our artists, report it on this website and we'll investigate it. Mm -hmm. Before yeah, we make any decisions. I forgot about that. Yeah, that was a PR That is stunt. wild. Yeah. Uh. So it's just, it's just really disappointing. And... It just keeps happening. And I, it's just crazy how it can happen without evidence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm a not on this. We are making zero progress <laughs> in how these situations are handled. They did not read my newsletter. I'm bitter. <laughs> we have to send it again. We do. <laughs> along, with your, along with your application for reins management. Yes, exactly. Somebody hire me. I can do, I can help. So much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just unfortunate. Um, I I personally, like, yeah, so something I wrote in that newsletter, which I posted in the Slack, is that if we were to pull back the curtain on, like, all of our favorite idols, we would hella find stuff just like this. We're talking about photos smoking, photos with girls, or saying insensitive or critical stuff, making fun of other... Like, that's just... That, that's the tip of the iceberg. Like, do we really think that our idols are squeaky clean, golden children and that we're not no. seeing just a, a mask, <laughs> an edited? Like, do we really right. believe that? Get mm -hmm. out of here. Get real. In a world yeah. where some of y'all faves are settling 24 hours after an announcement. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. That's what's oh, that's what's wow. going down out here. Okay? Exactly like that. Yes, that's the type of canceling we need. Not <laughs> not the small stuff. Talk about Sean P. Diddy Combs out here yes. who might finally go down. But yeah, like come on, the companies, SM Energy. I I, I refuse to believe that the companies, like someone like SM, is just powerless to 
make their own choices on this. Like they're just overcome with the the people's outrage. And so they can't stand by their artist and move through mm-hmm. this. I don't believe it. I, I think there must be some other reason they wanted this person out. Not to be that person, but y'all do it when they uh, make colors comments. Hey, now. Because lis- that's literally the only reason that I'm the last person on earth that has not, <laughs> as much as I want to listen to Guilty, I haven't yet, so... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Dang, yeah. Exactly. That is a really good point. When we fans are outraged about racism and colorism and all of that, and we are just screaming into the void, the company does nothing about it. Maybe an apology on Twitter. But yeah, it's selective what they act on. Yeah, smoking, kissing a, a woman, a young woman. That's what y'all go hard on. Cool. Got Mm -hmm. it. Cool. Got it. Noted. All right. Woo. This episode got me hot, y'all. Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) So (laughs) I think that about wraps it up. We are, gosh, what a fun discussion. This was great. Like with three guests. Yes. Man, we got into it. We all connected on Slack. So, you know, I really just got a shout out that everybody needs to join the Slack because that's where it's popping over there. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if anybody says popping anymore. I just showed my age. I just (laughs) showed my age, guys. (laughs) It's lit. It's uh, It's full of riz. No, that's not what they say. No. Oh, wow. (laughs) Hold on. Wait, wait. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not the right application. No. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> I'm joking. I wouldn't actually we tried, say that. We tried. <laughs> Anyways, so our time together is coming swiftly to an end. So to all of our esteemed guests, thank you, thank you, thank you for taking the time to be with us on the K-pop cast tonight. And uh yeah, how about each one of us let our listeners know where they can find you on social media or Slack or yeah, how can they get in touch? You know? Sure. Um, you can follow me on Twitter X. That's what I'm calling it. Um, my uh, handle is Mama D Loves Music. Or you can hop into the Slack and chat with me there. I am Journalistic Joe, all one word, J- uh, Journalistic J O E. Um, on the last episode, I said I'm too lazy to change it at this point, but you can catch up with me on Instagram and I am also in the Slack. Sweet. I'm Ashley, retired, off the grid. You might catch up with me through Stephanie. <laughs> I like that. That's real. That's real. I love it. That's off real. The grid. Yes. <laughs> Goals. Goals right there. What an honor to have my mom on the K-pop cast. This has been a long time Yay. coming. Ooh. Yay. Okay. Yay, Mrs. Parker. <laughs> Thank you. It's been fun. <laughs> Yes. All right. This won't be the last time. I'm calling it here. Um, You can find me on Twitter X at S Parker 2. And you can tweet all of us at the K-pop cast. And just like Dina said, and all of us echo, please join the K-pop cast Slack. Link to that channel and link to all the songs and stuff in the episode description. Bye, everyone. See you. Bye. Bye. Bye.